June 8th, 2020. It's cold today. We get snow overnight up in the mountains. And we were in the mid 90s out here last week. It's supposed to only be in the 50s today. That's Utah for you. I've been working on a number of different projects that I'd show a couple of them, so I'm not rambling. But it's a beautiful day. It's always a tropical oasis in here. See things are growing, doing well. This is a Eureka lemon. See, we've still got a few more lemons we haven't taken off there yet. And what's great about a greenhouse, you uh, grow them more frequently than if you're outside. So we get some new lemons started here. This is a Myers lemon. Get some fruit on it. We've been harvesting peas. The peas have been loaded. So we'll harvest these and probably replant in a couple weeks. So the dragon fruit are growing, but I would say they're doing not as well over here on this back wall where we don't get full sun in the summer as they are over here where they're in constant sunlight. Artichokes. I want to show you these because they are loaded with aphids. We've had an aphid problem. So we brought in ladybugs. Lots and lots of ladybugs. If I uh, read it correctly, they can eat five to 6,000 aphids during their lifetime. And they have yet to send me a bill for any of it. Lots of tomatoes. We've been harvesting tomatoes. Sun sugar is a fun variety. We've been eating them every day in here. So the fig is really thriving. Got uh, the potatoes on the ground, the potato plants on the ground. The squash has really done well in here on this back wall. Other things, tomatoes uh, haven't done well on the back wall, but the squash does very well. And pomegranate. It's a blood orange, newer plant. mango trees and harvesting peppers. So it's been uh, it's been fun and tasty so far. Um, maybe today I'll focus a little bit on the aquaponics because we've been making a lot of progress. Uh, one thing you'll hopefully notice as I show the uh, viewing window, Try to stay out of the sunlight so you can see the fish. We put some rainbow trout in the pond here. I figure if my calculations are correct, there's about 1,925 gallons of water circulating through here, and this tank will fully circulate every couple hours. So there's a lot of good water circulation. These are cold water fish. They like colder water. When it got really hot last week, we were monitoring things closely. The temperature at mid-level right now is about 65.9. Got a couple different thermostats to watch it. But these rainbows are beautiful. Why rainbows? Well, this is Utah, and I grew up hanging out in the mountains, in the rivers and streams, and I just fell in love with the rainbow trout. It is a beautiful fish in my mind. That's an albino right there. They're jumpers too, they're hungry, so um, I've got to deal with that. They haven't jumped out yet, but when I feed them, they jump. These are some rafts that I'm going to use for some growing of uh, greens. But I may have to do some netting around the perimeter of this. You can see the inflow from the pump. That is temporarily set there. That will go into a vertical system we'll do later. Here's the overflow. And uh, this is my solid waste filter. And this has a lot to do with why the aquaponics is here. 
what I like about the aquaponics is I want to use the fish waste and the fish water for the uh, for nutrients on the plants and trees. So the fish waste will a lot of it will end up in this solid waste filter, which is valved so that here I actually just valved it on. It uh, when I turn it on, it pushes out a lot of dirty water like this which I just ran a few minutes ago, and I put that dirty water on the plants and trees. And of course the fish waste creates ammonia in the water. That ammonia converts to nitrites, which converts to nitrates, which are great for plants. Hence the grow beds. Uh, so this system comes into this uh, solid waste filter and then it overflows into these grow beds. I've got the valves because these uh, bell siphons are kind of finicky. They don't want too little or too much water. So you have to kind of play with the valves to get the right amount of water so that the siphons will correctly work. And they overflow into the sump. As you can see two of them are currently overflowing, including this guy here. This is my, it's an external bell siphon. I call it a Show me siphon because I built it with clear pipe so that you could actually see the siphoning process work. I used half of a pot here so that the clay media wouldn't clog up the inlet. I like the clay media. The downside is it's expensive and it tends to float a little bit. If anyone has any suggestions on how to keep it from doing that, I'd love to hear it. But otherwise, it's a great material. I can see why people use it so much. The other thing I used was this lava rock, which I got at a local nursery. It's pH neutral, it's lightweight, it is very inexpensive. So we'll try both and see what works best out here. The other thing I'll show you is um, I put a water line in and a float. Right here, on the other side, there's a float which keeps my water level from dropping. The system will take on some new water uh, from time to time throughout the day, and that, of course, is new cold water, which helps us keep the water cold. So fish and plants in the aquaponics, we're just getting started. We'll keep you posted on how all of this goes. And I think for today, I'll leave the update at that.